I'm Hannah. I am I'm the women's pastor at church here. And I love what I do, and I'm a photographer, and that's all you need to know about me right now. <laughs> because I have, um, I have quite a deep word to um, share with you this morning, um, something that the Lord has put on my heart, and um, I'm speaking right out of a season that I'm in at the moment. Um, but first of all, before I get into the word on reviving your armor, I just want to talk about something that the Lord dropped in my heart on the way here. And this is what this word's all about as well. But um, I'm just trying to think how to explain it. Okay, so he just, the Lord spoke to me and he's like, some of my people are eating stale bread. <sighs> so, <laughs> um, and, and, you know, no one wants to start their preach off with that. <laughs> no one does. You know, no one does. But the thing is, is that what I do is I'm going to bring you the good news of how to eat decent bread, hey? And I don't want to put the bread in like the religious context, but I believe that some of us have got stale. And the thing is, is that revival is on its way and we can't be in a place where we're eating stale bread. We have literally got to be overflowing with the Spirit of God. Okay, so that's, that's, you know, that's where I'm at as well. I'm like, God, I don't want to eat stale bread. (laughs) Man, it's moldy, it tastes yuck. It's a bit, you know, you could slap some around the face with it. It's gross. No one wants that. So this morning, I encourage you to, as this word gets released about reviving your armor, let God refill you, give you your armor that you need to go forward. All good? Cool. (laughs) I'll go home now. Okay. And I thought it was quite interesting that it's Anzac Day And the Lord wanted me to talk on our (laughs) armour. I thought that was quite cool. Okay, so um, the other week I went to New Plymouth and I went on holiday. Yep, we get holidays. It's pretty cool. Went away with the family, my two and a half year old and my amazing husband. But just before we went away on holiday, a series of events events happened that kind of blew my mind. So I was in Richmond... And I was driving along, and I I had Izzy in the back of the car. Next minute, a car pulls out real quick of a car parking space. Don't know what they were up to. Give me patience, Lord. And and I had braked, and, like, the car kind of braked and skidded. They didn't even realize, I don't think. (laughs) And, you know, they came out, and I was like, oh, okay, that was a near miss. Okay, but, yep, cool, everyone's okay. Okay, next day or the day after, I'm cycling along on my bike, Someone pulls out straight in front of me. I put my brakes on. These teenagers are like, whoa. I was like, it's, oh, I don't even care if that's embarrassing anymore. <laughs> and I, and I braked, and I don't even think they saw me either. <laughs> and I, you know, was just about to brake and go over the bonnet of their car, and they just carried on. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? That's not a normal week for me. I don't know if that's normal for you guys, like... Okay, so that's two things in, this, in, in the same week that I'm like, okay, this is a bit odd. I'm trying to save my life here. <laughs> okay, so then we go on holiday. We go to New Plymouth. Where I've sat with all, all the cousins, all the family are together. And um, Izzy grabs a hot coffee, pours it over herself, gets dropped on the floor because she was sat on someone's lap, screams, never heard anything like it. I grab her, run. We all jump in the shower fully clothed. She was fine. So she, had, she did have a bright red leg and she was in pain, but she was okay because God oversees it all. I'm not saying that like, if something does really bad happen, God isn't overseeing, but I'm just saying in each of these three things, none of, none of them came to pass. Does that make sense? Okay, so then the same day, that Izzy spills her coffee on her leg, we're driving 80 to 100 k's down one of the main roads of New Plymouth and this person just pulls out straight in front of us and we swerve right and we swerve left (laughs) and actually all they got was me pressed against the window going, what are you doing? (laughs) Because at this point I'd hit breaking point and I was like, yeah, more likely have to practice my response on that. But as far as I was mama bear, I've got my baby in the back, you know. So um, I feel quite sorry for that person if they did see my face out the car window. 
If they had taken us out, it would have been horrendous because we had cars behind us and everything like that. But they didn't. This was one of my weeks. Is that, has anyone, is that a normal week for anyone to get taken out nearly three times and have stuff happen? No, it's weird, isn't it? Right, good. I just wanted to accomplish that. Okay, so I had to question at this point. I'm like, okay, this isn't a coincidence. I actually believe right now that I'm in a spiritual battle. Okay, now sometimes you can talk about stuff and people are a bit like, oh, you, you know, you can over-spiritualize things. No, sometimes it, it's the real deal. Because the thing is, in Ephesians 6.12, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So with all of this going on, I really had to make a decision what the heck I was going to do because I needed to protect my family and I also quite wanted to stay alive myself. So I had a few choices, and I think we have a few choices when the storm's going on. We can get really dramatic about these events, and we can raise to that level and be like, oh my gosh, do you know what's going on with me? This is crazy, this like happened all week. And, or we can get really worried about it. Ooh, really worried about it. That's my worried impression. <laughs> my worrying doesn't look like that at all. It involves pacing and... <laughs> Was I going to get worked up? Are we going to get worked up about it all? Or am I just going to stick my head in the sand and actually go, I'm just going to ignore this season that I'm in? Or was I going to remember that I'm seated in heavenly places and know what my authority is and declare that God is good? And remember that Satan is an idiot. So I thought, okay, what am I going to do in this situation? Right, I've got intercessors in place. Some of you know that um, I'm part of a team for the flood movement. The first thing the Lord told me to do is that I need you to get intercessors in place for you personally. For you personally, over your marriage, over your safety, over your life. And then he just was like, that person's going to cover that. That's going to per- cover that. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing, I'm in the car after this last incident's happened. I'm texting Kirsten and I'm like... Just a little description of what's going on. I'm like, I need you to pray. That was me calling out the authority of God in me with wisdom to go, I need, I need an army. <laughs> I need an army right now. What happens when you call in the army? The storm calms. Because we're called to do life together. Not called to do the storm on our own. We're not called to do the battle on our own. That's not how Jesus walked. He calls us to have an authority in the storm, in the battle of when it's going on. He says in Luke 10, 9, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means will hurt you. Okay, so that's just, that verse has just played out in my life a few weeks ago. You see, God will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Matthew 16, 18. And when we gather together as an army, we smash down walls. It's awesome. You've got to get Jesus into your storm. You've got to get Jesus in the front of your battlefield. You see, I made a choice not to go down the rabbit hole of my situation that was going on. I actually made a choice to call on an army. I made a choice to know the authority that I carry. And I don't mean that in such a uh, big-headedness. Literally, God has called us to smash the enemy. So when we've got stuff going on in our lives, you literally have a choice on whether you are just going to take it and just get stuck in his hole, or you're going to take what God has given you. You're going to take that Jesus died on the cross for you. You're going to take that anointing that God has given you, and you're going to run with it. What's your thinking like when you're in the battle? Are you feeling sorry for yourself or are you rising up how God has called you to rise up? So this is the verse that we're going to be looking at. Now, you know, some of you have heard about, you know, the armor of God and we get taught it in Sunday school. But I just want to pull it a bit more apart for you. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's pretty full on. In the power of his might. Wowzers. Pull on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the 
files of the devil. <laughs> For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Right, here we go. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you, that I, that you, that me, <laughs> may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. I thought that's quite cool. It says above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. I haven't moved on to uh, technology yet. I'm still on paper. Hold on. <laughs> And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all, all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. You see, some of us have heard this verse, some of us have had it taught to us, some of us have seen it, and we're like, yeah, I walk in the full armor of God. But I really believe at the moment we're in a season where some of us have got our helmets on back to front. Some of us have got our belts loose. Some of us have only got one shoe on. Some of us don't even have any armor, but we're complaining about the situation that we're in because the thing is, is that the armor of God is from God. You don't just go, oh, I'm just going to put my armor on. That's not what it's about. God has given you salvation. God sent Jesus. He's the truth, the way, the life. God has given you the gospel, authority, That's how you silence a room, just if anyone's looking for any tips. It's just, it's right there. <laughs> See, some of us haven't even heard this verse, and that's totally cool, because you're completely in for a treat on us going through this together. So first of all, let's look at the first piece of armor. It says, having girded your waist with truth, you need to know the truth. How many of you know the truth? Sweet, Ryan does. Cool, and Adele. I got a few. Woo! Okay, just checking. <laughs> We've got to know the truth because the truth will set you free. You've got to know discernment. With truth comes the relationship with God. We've got to have our belt tied on and tied tight. I don't know the conversations that you guys get in or what's going on in your workplace, but there is so much stuff that is not truth that will sway you left and sway you right, and God is raising an army that will know the truth. And it's this season that he's saying, are you, are you ready? Do you know me? One of my favorite verses, and every time I preach, I always say it, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Because that's what God did to me. Like I, I, I went to church for years and it was great. But once I grasped hold of the truth, that's when the freedom comes. The second piece of armor, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, I always think that it's like making sure that we are right with God. We are right standing with God. This is where it gets a little bit, a little bit icky, eh? A little bit like, oh, yeah, I'm all good. I'm all good. Yeah, I'm good. And sometimes we've got to ask the Holy Spirit, are we good? Are we good? Is there stuff in our lives that we need to sort out? Because he is a holy God. And I don't mean that like, you know, as soon as you step out like this at the moment, I feel like people think that you've got a religious spirit or, or something. But I think we need to remember that like he is a holy God. He is a holy God. I really don't move in the religious spirit. <laughs> I'm telling you now. <laughs> like, I love Jesus. I'm all about that. But I also know how important it is to be right with God. And sometimes things have come up in my life where I see other people doing it, and I'm like, why have I got to stop that? What's the deal with that? How come they get to do that and do this and go out there, and, and you're like, no, you're not. <laughs> And it's just something I've got used to now, and it's absolutely fine, because when God calls me to stop something, when he calls and he prompts something on my heart, the freedom that comes after that is absolutely, I wouldn't replace it for the world. 
And then he takes, it's not just about me, he takes me into situations of where he has sharpened me and I get to share my testimony, I get to release gold from heaven into someone that doesn't know Jesus, but if I was still continuing in that space, I couldn't be doing the work that he's called me to do. So I believe putting on the breastplate of righteousness is getting right with God. There's something that I've been through recently where he's, he's asked me to give something up that was very normal for people in, in this world and very normal for Christians. Um, but for me, it was something he highlighted to me. And I was just like, man, that's, I don't want to do that. Like, it's the first thing he's asked me to um, get rid of because the other stuff was, was destroying me. But I didn't think this was destroying me. This was very normal amongst people. And he was like, no, I, your days are done with this. I need you to give this up. And it was the first time he showed me, and he's like, because you've placed it over me. Because you've become reliant on that, and you need to be reliant on me. And in this season, he started talking to me about gold. And it speaks in Revelation that we buy gold from God. Now, when I actually gave this thing up, the doors that opened... I know I've just kind of explained it now, but I wanted to speak more on a personal thing. The doors that opened to share Jesus with people, the, the amazing things that God did. And actually, what, why God wanted that is because the enemy actually had a hook in me with this thing. And so I set myself 21 days, and I said, right, God, 21 days. Oh, let's try it for 21 days, because... Giving it up completely is definitely not what's in my head right now. (laughs) I gave it up for 21 days and I marked it on the calendar and I feel that's for some of us here. I feel there's stuff in our lives that we have to give to God that he doesn't want in our lives right now. And he goes, try it for 21 days. Mark it in your diaries, mark it in your calendar because the freedom that comes with it is incredible. Because he calls us to live a life of abundance. But there's stuff in our lives that is hindering us. Even the normal stuff. Do you know what I mean? The normal stuff. You go and sit with the pub, everyone's having a drink. It's normal. But what's God calling you to? What should your life look like with him? Is that okay? Does everyone hate me now? That's great. Yeah, calm, calm. Just checking, you know. So let's be making sure that we don't have holes in our armor. Because man, doesn't that hurt? Can you imagine that? Like, you haven't got your helmet on, you've got your armor on, a bit of skew with, you've got a few holes in. It's awkward. You look awkward. If you turn up to the, to the battle with your armor all put on back to front, you can look like a riot idiot. <laughs> Just letting you all know. <laughs> and you know, as the body of Christ, we're the body. We're all together. We've got to all be equipped and ready, and ready to go, eh? And do you know what? It actually takes us going up to someone and saying, hey... Is that thing that your your that thing there is that all good? That's iron sharpens iron. That's love by the way. That's real friendship. When you see someone struggling but they don't think they're struggling, you don't go and judge them. You just go, "Hey, you're good. I just see that's happening." Boom, you're fixing the drama. So, I encourage you. What is the Holy Spirit asking you? to lay down this morning and take, take up the gold of God. Okay, so, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, shod, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> okay, shod means, I had to check it out obviously, Um, to bind under your feet, to be in bonds, to knit together, to be at one with. I really like the be at one with. Be at one with the gospel of peace. Every every step that we take, we have the gospel of peace. Let's make sure we got our shoes on, eh? Let's not have one shoe on and some weird theology over there. You're like, peace, weirdness. Peace, weirdness. Let's get like, do you like my new shoes? Uh, (laughs) New Nikes, new season. Um, Let's get 
let's get the gospel everywhere we walk, walk. Let's be the gospel. When we go out on the streets, we want to be the gospel. When we're in the workplace, we want to be the gospel. And not the gospel where you're screaming and shouting it at someone's face. He says the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. The gospel of love. Not, you're going to go to hell. That doesn't match up with the gospel of peace. That's my opinion. Gospel of peace is going up to someone and going, hey, can I pray for you? I just see that you, you look like you're struggling a bit. Can I pray for you? Sweet, cool, set free, delivered. Sometimes when we go up to people, by the way, and we think we're going to pray for healing, God will download a whole other thing to you and God will bring breakthrough in their lives. Just a little side note there. Sometimes it looks a bit different. So let's make sure that we actually know our scripture, hey, the gospel. This is like the living word of God. Like I'm, I'm meeting with people at the moment. I'm like, you're reading your Bible. Way, your life will change through the gospel. It's, it's, really, it's really simple. If you don't read this, you won't get fed and you're eating stale bread. Hey, that rhymes. <laughs> I'm stoked about that. <laughs> Some of us can quote scripture like we're the boss. Some of us are Christians and we haven't even picked the Bible up all week. Bearing in mind, is the living word of God? That's a little bit awkward. Some of us think that we read the word on social media and then we're all sorted. God is calling a situation right here where he's saying it's not enough. You have the word bound in you, knitted on your feet, knitted in your spirit and your soul and your heart. so important. It's so important that you have the gospel. It's so important that you, you just make time. Someone said to me, you know, like, we can say that we're busy. Man, my life's busy. Yet we, you had a choice to make it busy. I had a life coach tell me that. We were talking about busyness. Man, I'm just so busy. I'm so tired. I'm so frustrated. I'm really busy. She's like, well, you made a choice to do that. Oh. <laughs> That was like from the Lord. (laughs) I was like, I'm going to take that wherever I go. That's good. Okay. Above all, this is my favorite. I love this. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. One. Shield of faith. How important is that? Have faith. Every time, um, every time we go into life, every time we go into the workplace, every time we've got something going on in our lives, God calls us to literally have faith in that situation. And as I was unpacking this with the Lord the other day, I started to realize that it's faith that knocks the enemy on his head. So when we've got those storms happening and those big things happening, we actually stand in faith and we go, God, what are you saying? Okay, you're saying this. Right, you say that you'll give me my heart's desires. Right, God, I'm going to stand in faith and stand for what you are saying to me. And I don't care what Satan's saying to me because this is what God is saying to me. And in faith, I will put something in place to say no more to you, Satan, because this is what my living God, my Father, my Papa, Jesus Christ is saying to me. We have to do that. There's too many of us that are getting run over by the enemy and then we're wondering what's going on. Some of you know the story with Izzy, um, my two and a half year old, but I wanted to share what faith can look like. See, I, I took up a shield of faith. After losing four, having four miscarriages, I was like, nah, bro. Now, some of you walked that journey with me, and oh my goodness, thank you, because I've got Izzy now, because it comes down to warriors and prayer, and it comes down to faith. And I I got pregnant with Izzy, and I, I knew, I was like, nah, I just got my armor on. I felt like I was real battered, but I got my armor on. And I, I put up a, co- I said, God, he, no, actually, he spoke to me first. <laughs> he was like, you need to, um, declaration, you need to put something in place to declare that you, that this is going to happen. You're going to look like a nutter. And people thought I looked like a nutter, but you get to a point where you just don't care anymore. Um, so um, I put a cot up in my house. I needed something to put up. I actually came to church and Ness and Jono didn't know and said, hey, we've got a cot for you because God will put things in place when you want to stand out. 
put Cod up at home. Everyone was like, what the heck are you doing? She's okay. Obviously, it's just something about grief or something like that. No, God had called me to do that. I put a cot up in faith. I got pregnant again. I knew that I was going to keep this baby. There was a battle on. A lady walked into a cafe. Didn't know her from Adam. She was actually an angel. Sounds bizarre. Talk to me about it later on. And then she said to me, you're going to have a baby girl. Good things are coming to you. And she explained some other things. Never saw her again. Got new by the presence of God. That morning I'd prayed and said, God, why have you forsaken me? And he sent someone in to tell me that I was going to have a baby and that I was carrying a baby. What did I do? I put faith into action. I put a cot up and I said, no, Satan. What do you need to do in your lives where you put something in place and you step out in faith? Because he says, above all, take up the shield of faith. So when those darts do come, you've got your, you've got your shield of faith in action. It's already going. And take up the helmet of salvation. This one's really cool. I love this. This is like the exciting bit. Well, it's all really exciting, but you know. Salvation, eternal life, to know that you have Jesus. Do you know that your helmet is essential? Do you know that if you're running around and you're doing things that God really isn't 100% happy with, it can knock your helmet? I'm not saying that you lose your salvation because no one knows that apart from God. So we're not opening that up for debate. (laughs) I know that when I was living in sin, God sent someone into a bar and told me that I was a Christian. And I'd walked away from the Lord and he says, you're a Christian. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's debatable right now. For me, that shows me the love of God because he saw me. But what I'm saying is, let's make sure that we got our helmets on, hey? Not back to front, not to the side. Not with the shutter down that you can't see anything at all. (laughs) Let's make sure that we know that we have got salvation in Jesus Christ. Let's make sure that we've got our our plate on, that we are right with God. Let's make sure that we know where we're going, eh? (laughs) Because let's be real, heaven, hell. There's no middle ground. Do you know, I'll I'll share something with you. I wasn't sure whether I was going to do this, but why not? We're all in. Um... Uh, This week, um, Alex lost someone uh, very close to him, and he was our age. It's hard. (laughs) It's really hard. But do you know what the biggest thing for me that was really hard about? Was I don't know if he knew Jesus. And it was one of the biggest wake-up calls for me of how important it is that we have our armor on and that we're walking with the gospel on our feet. And we're sharing it everywhere that we go. Because there are people dying. And there's people dying that don't know God. And, and we can't sit in the seats anymore. So the time of just coming to church, and it should never have been like that, and coming to church on a Sunday and then just leaving again, it is done. There needs to be an importance. And there is a wake-up call coming from, from the throne room, from the Lord Jesus Christ himself, waking Christians up going, I need you. I've always needed you. This was never supposed to be a come in on a Sunday morning on your seats and then leave again. It was, well, you are supposed to leave. (laughs) But it was never a, a, a sit down with glue and then you don't mention anything about Jesus in the week. It was never supposed to be like that. He's given us all authority. He says in his word that you can stand on scorpions, you can stand on the head of Satan. Is someone struggling in your workplace? Get your prayer on. Does someone need to know the truth? Get your belt on and go take the truth to them. Because you have salvation. You have a key. Most of you here all have a key for Jesus Christ. Some of us have got keys that we've just hidden in our pockets for years and years. Some of us have got one key out, two keys, and I remember preaching about the keys many when I just started out, <laughs> back in the days. Actually, it was only more like last year. Um, but let's get our keys out. Let's get our armor on. Do you know that you're saved? Do you know that when you call Jesus Christ into your life that you're saved? That you have eternal life? That you don't die and you go to heaven? That you get to be with Jesus? Are you saved? 
Are you saved? <laughs> this is a real thing, eh? Life or death. I don't know if I've ever preached and the room's ever been quite so quiet in my life. You can all take out with God later on, is it yours or me? <laughs> okay. Here we go. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the living Word of God. Ha! Oh, thank goodness. So when the battle comes and you've got doubt going on and you don't know which way to turn, this is what you get to do when you read the Word of God. Because Jesus said so much. And when the battle comes, you can actually go, you can pace your kitchen, you can get your prayer on, you can be in your car. My car's my favorite place. I love to pray in my car. It just seems to be my hot spot at the moment. (laughs) You see, because we get to a point when we know the word and when the storm is raging that we can go, wait a second, Jesus, you said that you were the way, the truth and the life. So that voice that's speaking to me needs to shut up right now because, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, the life. God, you said that if I draw near to you, you will draw near to me. So when I'm in my bedroom and I don't feel anything, that's okay. But I do know that if I'm drawing near to you, you draw near to me and you're still here. I heard a speaker preaching yesterday and he was talking about, he goes, man, Dan Moeller, if anyone's heard of him, I love what he's teaching at the moment. And he goes into his room and he goes, shuts the door and he goes, Papa, I'm here. I'm here. He goes, sometimes I don't feel anything and I could just be a nobody, but I know that God is here. I may not feel him. It may not be the headspace I'm in, but I know because God says that if I draw near to him, he will draw near to me. You see, God said that he would give me my heart's desires when you've got that thing coming against you, when you're losing and you feel like you're losing the battle, but it's the heart's desires and God has spoken to you and said, I'm going to give you that. You fight for that. You use the word and you say, God, you will give me my heart's desire. Your word says that. You said that you know every hair on my head when your identity is being slapped around. God, you know every hair on my head. You, Jesus died for me. God, you said that you would give me a heart of flesh and not of stone and a new spirit. Is your sword sharp? Do you know the word of God? Are you ready for battle? Katie, you're all good to jump up. You see, the authority is in his word. The authority is in Jesus Christ. Have you guys got your full armor on? Is it possible time that you need to give it a wee bit of a polish? Get your polishing cloth out? Do you know what I mean? Do some of you need to do some welding? I don't know, I'm putting it out there to you. I know that I do. Far out, we're not perfect, but I'm sure going to go into the fight equipped and knowing that I'm going to fight for what God's bringing. Are you guys ready for it? Because I really believe that it's not about us. You know that, guys? It's not about us. It's about a lost generation. Actually, it's about lost nations. It's not just generations. I was watching the news last night and I was, you know, it says that Jesus was moved with compassion and that's one of the things I've been asking for. I'm like, God, move me with compassion. I'm like, I can't even watch anything anymore. (laughs) Poor Alex. Um, And I'm watching the news and I'm looking at the state of India and I'm like, my heart's grieved and I'm like, God, are we praying or are we just too busy doing what we're doing? Are we stopping for a second? Or are we ready to fight with our armour on to do what God has called us to do? See, we need to have a knowing about our armour. We need to know that we stand in faith with our shield. We need to know that we say, yes, I have salvation in Jesus Christ and my helmet is not going anywhere. 
It's knowing that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life and your belt is fastly tightened and there's nothing that can come and pull on that belt at all. No lie, no person, nothing. Truth of God strapped tightly. It's knowing that the gospel of peace is knitted to your feet. It's knowing that you have the sword of the Spirit ready and I know my word and I'm ready for when God calls me. It's knowing that I'm all good with God. Does your armour need reviving? So this is what I felt to do this morning for ministry. And it's a tiny bit different. Does that scare anyone? No, I'm joking. I really just want to lay it on the line. I've really felt like... I'd love to bring a really happy type message, but I believe this is to bring freedom. This is for us to get into the Word of God. This is us to get our armour on. But in that place of when we get our armour on, needs to come a moment of repentance. And repentance sounds like a heavy word, but actually it's the most freeing, awesome, abundant word you can come across. And humility. It's when we go, actually, do you know what, God? I haven't done that too right, God. I'm actually going to... Now, someone explain it to me because I'm visual and it's very simple, but I love this. Um, Repenting is literally just turning away and going, yep, I'm going to walk this direction now and I'm going to give it a go. And Jesus, I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to go for it. And I feel that as we're worshipping, we're going to open up the altar and I want to make this a place of surrender. I want to open up this altar that it will be a place where people will come and do business with God obviously if you need healing and everything there's always that space in this house always but if you there is something on your heart I'm asking you to step out if you want to stay in your seat you can but there's something amazing about physically stepping out for God and saying do you know what I've had my helmet on back to front do you know what I don't even have a breastplate on I've got like a t-shirt on do you hear me is that good I'm creating a space for us to get right with God (laughs) Adele's running (laughs) that's why I love her (laughs) do you need to trade stuff with the Lord this morning and take up gold and this is the best part about it It's got nothing to do with me opening this bit up. It's got everything to do with the Holy Spirit. And you know, like, sometimes there's stuff that the Lord highlights and we haven't got a clue how we will deal to that. I want to let you know that I came out of drugs for years and years and years and drink that you know, and I didn't know how I was going to do that. But God walked one day at a time with me and he did a supernatural healing as I walked forward. And it's not just drinking drugs. It's all the... It's the the gossip it's the it's all those things how do we speak about people how are we talking about people it's all those things and you know like God loves us so much that he wants to get us free if anything you take away from this message is that God loves you and he wants you to be protected and to be protected means you put on his armor on your life is that, is that cool? Okay. So let's let's worship. Please use this space. Please use this space to come and get right with God. It's a beautiful space. Jesus is beautiful. He's beautiful. You know, like I was thinking about the whole Bible. The whole Bible is about calling people to him. Some of it was a bit scary in the Old Testament, but the main purpose, he was desperate for his people to know him. He was desperate because he's a God of love. And if you don't know Jesus or you've actually just gone, I don't even know where I'm at at the moment and if you've slidden away, then I encourage you to come and get right with God this morning and come and get down the front as well because your life will never be the same. When we say yes to God and when we step out, your life will never be the same. And if there's some stuff when you come forward, you're like, man, I don't want to tell anyone anything. You don't need to because this is an altar with you and Jesus. 
This is, this is you and Jesus' time. 